Shalom. We are continuing our, our learning of Sefer Malachim Aleph. Uh, Shlomo HaMelech has now completed the Beis HaMikdash as well as his own palace. It took seven years to complete the Beis, to finish the Beis HaMikdash. And it took him another 13 years for his own palace, a total of 20 years of construction. And Perak Tess begins, V'yikechalo Shlomo Livno says Beis HaShem Beis Beis HaMelech V'yis kol cheshek Shlomo asher chafetz la'asos Behold, Shlomo has finished the Beis HaMikdash and he finished his palaces. And cheshek Shlomo and all of the architectural projects he wanted to complete. And he did it. And after those 20 years, V'yera HaShem El Shlomo Shenit HaShem now appears to Shlomo directly a second time. Kasher Nira Elav Begiva. So Shlomo was not getting direct Nevuah that often. The first time was in Givain before the Beis HaMikdash, and that's when Shlomo asked Hashem for wisdom. And Hashem said, Because you asked for wisdom and you didn't ask for life or wealth, I will give you everything. And now he comes to him a second time. And Hashem, not through a Navi, this is a direct Nevuah to Shlomo HaMelech himself. I have heard your prayers and your supplications. I have sanctified this Beis HaMikdash, that my name should be there forever. That's the ideal, there should never be a Chorban. For, of course, the Rambam writes, this also refers to the Halacha, that even B'Chorbanai, the Makam HaMikdash has Kedusha, which is why we can't go on the Harabayas in a state of Tumah. For Hoyu Enai V'libai Libi Shom Kolayamim. And my desire is that my eyes and my heart should be connected to this Makam forever and ever. V'yata and you, Im Teilech L'fanai Kesharlach David Avicha B'tom Leivav U'v'yayshe. If you walk in front of me as your father walked, with purity of heart and uprightness, to do whatever I command you to do, and you will keep all of my laws. If you do that, I will establish your throne and your rulership on the Jewish people forever. Kasher dibarti al David avicha lemar, as I said to David your father, if you keep the mitzvos, lo yi kares lecha ish mi al kishe Yisrael, there will never be a descendant that will lose his malchus. The malchus of Am Yisrael will never cease, as long as the kings are righteous and keep the mitzvos. But a warning. But if you turn away from me, you or your descendants, and you don't keep my laws, you don't keep the Torah, and you go and you worship other gods, small g, and you bow down to them, as this is the language of Kriyashma, then, not only will you suffer, but the whole nation will suffer. I will remove the Jewish people from the land. They'll be gullus. So this is foretold at the very beginning that I gave them. And the very house that I sanctified to my name. I will throw away from in front of me. Chorban. Vahaya Yisrael Lamashal Vilishnina Baina Amim. And the utter devastation of the Jewish people will become a mashal in the eyes of the world. When they want to describe utter devastation, total destruction, rejection by God, they will say, Look at what happened to the Jewish people. And this bias that should have been the highest and most holy place, call over a love everyone that will pass the site of a destroyed temple. Ye shom visharak shall be astonished, shamama, and will whistle in amazement. What on earth happened here? 
Again, this is mirroring the language in the Torah, in the Teichacha. The Yomru, and they will say, Alma Osa Hashem Why did God do this to Eretz Yisrael? For a bias as a and and destroy his bias, the umru and the answer will be, al asher ozvu again. It's mamish paraphrasing the Torah. Asher ozvu Hashem elokehem. They have abandoned their God. Asher hotzi as I was some years who took their forefathers. The goyim will say this even, who took their forefathers out of Mitzrayim. Vayachziku beluhim acherim. They grabbed onto other gods. Vayishtachu lahem and bowed down to them. Vayavdum and they worship them. And all came, Hevi Hashem Aleim Eis Kol Arazos, and that is why the Eibushter brought them all of this uh, punishment. Although I do want to point out that the shame of Hashem that is used in this situation is indeed Yud Kei Vav Kei the Mida of Rachamim that indicates even in Chorban, Hashem has Rachamim. And now we go on. And it was after the 20 years that Shlomo had built his two buildings, the Beis Hashem and his own palaces. This is not the craftsman, this is the king of Tzor, the king of Phoenicia in the Lebanon. Nisa <coughs> Shlomo, he was supplying Shlomo this whole time for 20 years. Atzei Arazim, cedar wood. Atzei Baroshim, cypress wood. Zahav l'chol chepso, all sorts of gold uh, up there. Oz yitain hamelech Shlomo l'chirim esrim ir be'eretz hagolil. So Shlomo, in gratitude for chirim's gifts, transferred to Shlomo uh, transferred to chirim twenty cities in the Galil. <coughs> now this raises grave halachic questions. There's an Isser D.I. Rice, in fact, this is very relevant to the Hetzer Mechira of Shemitah, where the Rabbanut sells the land to the Goy. There's an Isser D.I. Rice to give land to a non Jew in Eretz Yisrael. Lo Sechanem is interpreted to mean, in Veschanan, do not give a Goy Chaniyah Bakarka. How could Shlomo give 20 cities, presumably Jewish people are living in those cities, to Chiram Melech Tzor? So because of this, the Mephorshim explained, he did not transfer ownership of the cities. He simply gave Chiram the right to tax revenue, their produce, a certain percentage, their oil, their wine, meaning all of the income that was generated, the taxes of that city went to Chiram, not the cities themselves. Again, that, that's to avoid the problem of Lo Sechaneh. But some people are not so grateful. Chiram went to check out the cities. Lo He was not too happy with this. He said, hey, these are inferior cities. They don't produce a lot of grain, a lot of wine. And Chiram said, My brother. Right? I thought we were friends. What are these cities that you gave me? Vayikra Lahem and Chiram, somewhat sarcastically, gave them the name Eretz Kabul. Kabul means uh, a land of mud, Arayomazeh, meaning not so good. It's a lotion of, um, well, again, some of us say Kabul is tit, a land of mud. And others say Kabul is a lotion of chains, meaning it's a chained up land, it's locked up. It's not producing its riches. Okay. But nevertheless, in some total, now, now this could be interpreted as he continued to send him, or this is describing what he sent him over the past 20 years. Because it's a little schwer to say he continued to send him after this 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 dissatisfaction. But Chiram had transferred to Shalomo. 120 kikar, talents of gold. That's a huge amount of gold. V'zeh devar hamas asher hela hamelech shlomo livnos es beis Hashem v'es beiso v'es hamilo v'es chomas Yerushalayim v'es chatzor v'es megido v'es gezer. So again, the Pashtus is, this is describing his construction activities over the 20 years that are now finished. This is going over the past. 
Until now, we talked about the Beis Hamikdash and his palaces. Now we're saying there was a lot more that he did. He built the Beis Hashem, and he built his palaces. But he also got involved in a major construction project in Yerushalayim that is called Milo. And Milo, there's a big machlokas, either it refers to a wall around Yerushalayim, or it refers to a moat around Yerushalayim. It was something that enhanced the security of Yerushalayim. Uh, he strengthened the existing walls, and he built up three cities that had been destroyed by the Canaanites, or the Egyptians. He built up Chatzor, Megiddo, and Gezer. And now we're given a parenthetical note about Gezer. Why did Gezer at least have to be built up? He doesn't really explain the other cities. Paro Melech Mitzrayim Ola Vayilkod Es Gezer. At some period, this is way before Shlomo, this is the period of the judges. Paro had actually conquered Gezer, a city in the south. Yisrefa Ba'esh, he had burnt it. He didn't conquer it from the Jewish people. He had conquered Gezer when it was still a Canaanite city. He destroyed the city. He killed the Canaanites. But the Jewish people were never able to conquer it from Paro. So Paro just left it a desolate city under his control. And the Shoftim and David Yoshua, the Shoftim, David Amelech, they could not conquer Gezer. But what happened? Yitna Shiluchim Lebito Eshes Shloma. But when Bas Paro married Shloma, Paro gave Gezer to his daughter as a wedding present. Hmm, works out well. So Shlomo now has Shalita over the abandoned city of Gezer. But Gezer was left desolate, a wasteland. So that is why Shlomo built up Gezer, and as well as another area called Beis Choron Atachton, the lower area of Beis Choron. There's a higher area and a higher elevation, a lower area and the like. And in addition, other cities, Vies Balas, Vies Tadmor, Bamidbor Biaris. These were in the desert. Vies Kol Arei Hamiskin Asherayil Shlomo, and Shlomo also built up storehouses or cities of storehouses, warehouses. Vies Arei Harechav, cities where he kept his chariots. Arei Haprashim, cities where he kept his cavalry and his horses. Veschechek Shlomo Asher Chashak Livnos BeYerushalayim and all that he wanted to build in Yerushalayim and in the Lebanon Uvechol Eretz Mimshalto. So the twenty years were major, major, major building projects, and then we're told the following: Kol Ha'am Hanaisar Min Ho'Amayri Achiti Aprizi Achiva Yilusa Shalom Ebnei Yisrael Hema. There were still remnants of the seven nations of Canaan that were not eradicated. There were descendants that remained in the land that B'nai Yisrael could somehow not destroy them. Shlomo made them servants and slaves to this very day, meaning uh, for the duration of the Bayes Rishon. Now, again, we discussed this in the book of Yoshua. We don't really have the time to be ma'ayin extensively, but let me point out that according to the Rambam, the mitzvah in the Torah of eradicating the seven nations only applies if they did not accept peace terms. If they accepted peace terms, the seven nations are allowed to remain in Eretz Yisrael. The Kriyas Shalom. Now according to the Rambam, Kriyas Shalom requires three things. It requires Kabbalah's Zion mitzvahs. It requires mas, a willingness to pay taxes and acknowledge Jewish sovereignty. And it also requires the willingness to be an evet, to work as an evet. So according to the Rambam, what Shlomo HaMelech is doing is totally halachically valid. Yoshua could not kill these people, but we now have these survivors. Why doesn't Shlomo have to kill them? It's the seven nations. Answer, there were Makabel Zion mitzvahs, although that's not Beferish here. Amas and Abdus, that's what it says. So according to the Rambam, this is very understandable. 
the only problem is that Rashi has a different shita. And Rashi has a shita that Kriyas Shalom does not apply to the seven nations. The only option they have to live is they were given an opportunity to leave Eretz Yisrael. But if they refuse to li- leave Eretz Yisrael, they are Chay of Misa. If that is the case, we have Akasha, how could Shlomo make them Avadim? He's Mechayiv to kill them. And you can't answer that the same way Yehoshua could not conquer them. Shlomo cannot conquer them because if Shlomo cannot conquer them, then what gives him the ability to make them Avadim? If he's making them Avadim, then it's got to be he has the power to conquer them. So I'm going to leave it as a Tzorichian, and that is, according to the Rambam, we understand why Shlomo can impose Avdus on the descendants of the Sheva Umais. According to Rashi, it's very difficult. Yoshua didn't kill them because he couldn't. He couldn't be victorious for whatever reason. But once Shlomo has victory, why is he not Mechuyev in Lo Sechaya Kol Neshama? And then it mentions, Ume B'nei Yisrael, Lo Nasan Shlomo Evan, Shlomo did not impose any servitude on the Jewish people, only on the seven nations. Ki Haim, the Jewish people, the Yidden, were Anshe Milchama. They were... Uh, his soldiers in the army, Avadav, they were his servants in the sense of serving him, meaning they, they did jobs, but they didn't do the Avadas Perech of Inevit. They were Sarav, they were his officers, Shalishav, again his attendants, Sorei Richbay, uh, they managed his chariots, Uparashav, and his cavalry. Now, again, it's hard to understand this, because we did read that there were thousands and thousands of Jews that were stone cutters and wood cutters, and that seems to be Avedas Perech Mamish. So I think we have to learn that this Pasuk that says he enslaved the Canaanites, but not the Jews, that is referring to after the 20 years when the major construction projects were completed. Ein Achinami, during the 20 years, there were Yidden that were enslaved. So it's a little confusing. Some of the Pesukim are talking about after the 20 years, and some of the Pesukim are talking about before the 20 years. So you have to look at each Pesuk on its own. And then it uh, goes on, Eila, sorry, I need some, Meshara, Lamlech, Shlomo, Chamisha, Mechamesh, Meyais, that Shlomo did have construction projects even after the 20 years, but the Jewish people were not conscript, conscripted into that hard work, but they did serve as supervisors and foremen. This is after the 20 years, and he had 550 foremen, Harodim Baham, who were in charge of the people doing the work, which we just said were the Canaanites, not, not the Yidden. Ach, Baspara, also Mir David, Obesa, Shabban and Baspara, as we said, left Ir David, and she went to the special palace that Shlomo built for her, and Oz, Bana, Esamilo, and Shlomo as well built the Milo, which is really a, a moat or a wall around Yerushalayim. Again, why it repeats that, I'm not sure, because it already mentions uh, the Milo from before. Uh, then it says, Pasuk Chavhei, Vehela Shlomo Shalosh Pamim Bashana Olos Ushlamim Alamizbeach, three times a year, Shalosh Regalim. Shlomo brought burnt offerings and shlomim on the Mizbeach that he built for Hashem, v'hiktirito, and they were sacrificed, Hashem, Now, this is really very difficult. If the Shalash Pamim Bashana is the Shalash Regalim of Pesach, Shavuos, and Sukkot, well, what is so special about Shlomo? Every Zachor, unless they're Pater, Shalosh Pamim Bashana, Yehra'eh, Kol, Zechorcha has to uh, go up to the Beis HaMikdash. They have to bring an Olas Re'iyah, a burnt offering that is consumed on the Mizbeach. And they have to bring a Shlomim, which is a Chagiga. So to simply say that Shlomo brought Olos and Shlomim uh, doesn't mean anything. That's simply the mitzvah of Aliyah Leregel, which everybody is chayev to do, including the Melech. So the short answer is that Enochinami is simply emphasizing that he brought huge numbers of the korbanos, way, way, way in excess of what the basic chiv would be. Now, 
The Ani, the word Ani means Aniyot, ships. Ani Asa HaMelech Shlomo Be'etz Yain Gever Asher Es Eilos Al Sfas Yamsuf Be'eretz Adam. Now Shlomo then created a navy. He created boats in Etzion Gever, which is adjacent to Eilos. Now Eilos is the term for Eilat. So Etzion Gever is in the south, uh, next to Eilat, which is on the shore of the Yamsuf, the shore of the Red Sea, Eilat, in the land of Edom. Right? That's the boundary between Eretz Yisrael and Edom. And again, many say Eilat itself is not Eretz Yisrael. It belonged to Edom. And Shlomo wanted to do trading by sea, a navy, which had not been done by David. And once again, Chiram is a very good friend, even though he's annoyed with the cities. And he sends boats and sailors, Yode Hayam, who know the way of the sea, to help the Avde Shlomo navigate the ocean. Because the Phoenicians were great, great sea traders, if you look at their history. And they came as far as Ophir. Ophir had, uh, was in Africa. It had much, much gold. Zahav Arba Meos 420 Kikor, a huge amount of gold. El Shlomo. So again, Chiram is helping Shlomo acquire power and acquire wealth. And uh, these, this is the gold that was taken from Ophir. In fact, there's an expression throughout Tanakh. Zahav Ophir, Kesem Ophir. Right? Ophir is the, the place of gold. And uh, this was done with the collaboration of Chiram Melech So this is the end of Perek Tes, uh, called Tuf.